So, what deck are you feeling like uh, going for today? I'm using Spell Token Hunter. Okay, that is definitely one of the best decks in the game right about now for sure. A little bit too good if you ask me. Should be seeing some nurse about it real soon, but uh, until then we'll right. definitely use and abuse it. So, um, do you have a particular deck in mind? I'm seeing one that's doing particularly well with a ton of uh, sample size. 65% win rate, 18,000 18, games, diamond 11 for the last three days. Sounds quite about right. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably using that deck. Alrighty, well, if you want, we can jump into them games. You are not prepared. If you're trying to improve against Warrior, it's a great idea to actually jam out a few games with Warrior itself. It's going to so, give you a pretty so good idea a... of what is actually going to be working against it. Uh, so you can I, actually I had try a... and do that. So I, I guess that's one of the challenges. I had a pretty good history against Control Warriors, so I, I just played it. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of knew what they were doing, but I didn't know, like, okay, how do I play the Token Hunter against this? You know, because it just, it seemed like the he had an answer for every aggression. Okay, you know, we'll talk so. about it a little bit more after the game. Uh, I think we can keep right. just one dog, and even that might be a little bit too much because we have jack shit to open up with. But the yeah, RC like... Rampage... I don't know. It, pretty, it's a great card. Pretty far out on the curve. Yeah, let's throw everything. I think you can throw out everything for now. RC Rampage going first is your fourth best card kept, but they only keep it 35% of the time, and that kind of means that uh, you keep it when you actually have a good curve going already. Okay, okay what are you thinking so here? May, maybe, uh, maybe Rainbow Death Knight against us, so... Uh... I'm thinking to just get the uh, the quill bore out in order to be able to buff a token next turn. Yeah, I'm not against it. I'm happy that you're acknowledging the fact that this is going to give you a 2-2 snake. Or we could top deck a 2-mana beast as well or something like that. We'll see what we do next turn, but uh, for now, yeah. Given the state of our hand, I think this was the best we could have done, because uh, you don't know if you're going to be able to get a finale out of this music musician next turn. Seems like you will be able to. Okay, let's think about what we're going to be following up with. What do you prefer here? Mm. I guess I would go for the tokens on the board and then uh, fill the hand. What have we here? It's turn so, two. So play, play the it's, snake first. It's turn two. What are the odds of this man having a way to deal with a 5-2 right about now? He does have decent odds of dealing with it if he has the free damage for two mana. He could also coin out the free mana, but I think it's worth trying to throw out one for one on the board. Because uh, if he has to take five damage plus a hero power, that's super slow for him. Yeah, let's drop one out and go face, see how that feel. It's, it's, uh, like, the four ones, they're great, but this guy is always going to have a great answer for him in the form of his hero power. The thing about the snakes is it's going to be amazing for you. It's a one yeah. mana couple of idiots on the board and you can uh, abuse uh, your uh, location better like that, your RC hounds better like that, your uh, whatever the hell, that uh, two mana. Wait, we're now running the two mana idiot in this one? Okay. This is a bit different from the list I played, but uh, it's still looking pretty tight. But yeah, basically these snakes could be a lot more valuable to you with uh, things like saddle up, location, RC hounds... Stuff like that. Hey, look at that. That fire damage is going to be connecting mouth. So, so I was trying to think about the guy that uh, buffs buffs the board mm -hmm. when, when you play a guy with yeah, uh, bigger damage. Uh, yeah, thank thing you. The thing about there that card go. is yeah. it feels like it's it hard comes to... down to it a lot less than you'd like to, to see yeah. it happen. It's, it's hard to hit with it. Yeah. Um, hmm. So I, I don't know, do we push tempo and try to get face damage, or uh, let's let's see, we have three to work with. Um, we're kind of stuck with the one the one defense for the bodies, and uh, we we could get the uh, well we we could fill the animals to try to get the buff uh, from the plus one on another turn, but but not this turn. I think we're already decent on the board. We could just develop the patchwork uh, indeed, get the mantle shaper a little bit more discounted. And uh, if you actually manage to bait out the free damage AoE out of this guy, if he coins out his 4 mana free damage AoE, that might be great for us. So let's patchwork uh, pals 
And uh, even played a Sneaky Snakes. I think we played a Sneaky Snakes on this board. And you can just go face, because the worst thing he can do here is uh, trade his 3 to enter a 5 2, so why would we do that for him? I guess if he does have the free damage AoE, that's the worst thing he can do, because that way he doesn't even uh, trade, but we're definitely wanting to connect that big boy damage to, to his face there. Okay, so now if he coins out the free damage AoE, we're not going to be super sad, we're not going to be super happy. Okay, he's not doing it, so we're going to be very happy to bring Leok into this mix, because uh, your 1-1s one suddenly start dealing a little bit more significant amounts of damage. But uh, yeah, let's see what else happens here. Both Leok and Misha are going to be nice and resilient against potential free damage AoEs he might be having. Wait, he's coining? Okay. Okay, Helios fine-ish. Not, not great for us, obviously. That's his best case scenario, pretty much. But wow. Still, Turn let's see how it go. Yeah, so far this guy had the absolute nuts. Uh, what he could have asked for from Plague DK so far. Like, card for card, he could not have had a better hand. Uh, but uh, we're still broken enough to be able to close this game before it starts mattering too much as long as we don't top deck too many of those try to really push the tempo and get face damage yeah usually turn six is where we get him and with this uh agrimar in hand already that might be happening Ooh, this guy is in the hoose okay, okay. what do you want to do here uh i'm thinking to uh to get the huffer out there to be able to go face and I guess the big question is, do I ignore the 4-4 and push the tempo, or do I trade it to keep the control? Oh, wait. we're definitely not trading here. Like, uh, this guy, as soon as he gets the free damage AoE control, is going out the window. Uh, we can start thinking about maybe closing this man out in, in three turns from now. Like, right now, if we go Leoc Huffer, that would be 6-11 uh, damage. He's going to drop down to 12. If next turn you slap him with Leroy, he's going to drop down to 6. And turn after Agrimar weapon, he's going to be at 1. And we're talking about if everything dies each turn. So I think we will be able to close him out. Let's Leoc and Huffer this turn, sure. Huffer, Huffer. Yeah. Quick, quick. And face everything. This man basically showed us he did not have his free damage AoE all this time. Uh, as long as he does not top deck it, we should be in a pretty good spot right about now. If he does top deck it, we still continue with the onslaught. I think we should be fine. Okay, if we can do it, it, let's try to get our discussion going a little quicker so I don't yeah, have to I'm, be Yeah, I'm doing right my best. I'm just trying to, yeah. uh, to go over all the points across. I'm still leaving you like uh, yeah. 30 seconds to, to actually execute things, so... Uh, yeah, yeah I've, I've noticed that it, it, it takes a, it, it's kind of a, the absorbing, the information you're conveying is uh, challenging in terms of the pace. So, it, it's so definitely, we'll, we'll see how we do. It's definitely quite hard, like uh, getting my point across yeah. and being it a discussion. Uh, nonetheless, uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm really trying my best to, to get the point across as fast as I can in a, learning educational kind of fashion you know like no i uh, i appreciate it very much i yeah. i understand uh, I, i'm just trying to give you the feedback that uh that's that's what i battle against <laughs> but it, it's all good you're doing a great job yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna try to get the points across uh, as fast as we can i mean uh, the thing is everything is new to me as well mostly like uh yes <laughs> this this yeah. particular deck i haven't really played by the way it. you okay. know okay wait a moment yeah Okay, uh, is the play Leroy and, and hit face? If we do Let's that, see. we give him a couple of 1-1s. One hmm. Alternatively, we could go for another Huffy Boy to the mouth, plus a uh, Bursting Germonger. Technically, Leoc... No, Leoc is not the same thing. We're one mana short the hero power there. Hmm. We're definitely charging his face with something right about now, but which is this something going to be? I think another Huffer might be the way to go here. Okay, so you want to do patchwork and then go the Huffer? I think so. Huffer. 
And you can put down uh, Mantle Shaper because he's nice and sturdy. Mantle Shaper, the one mana red guy. Ah, oh, yeah. And face Thank everything. You. Okay, there we go. Okay, next turn we have him <laughs> dead by Leroy only. Uh, if we play Leroy this turn, it would have been more damage. Uh, but we were giving him one once to trade the board with. Okay, that's kind of a bummer, but as long as he ain't healing, he's dead. And as long as he doesn't taunt. See what he gets. Yeah, I mean, for, for my knowledge playing against him, I was just trying to think, did he have any lifesteal? Did he have any taunt? But Yeah, they don't really have him straight up. They can discover him through... Uh... Uh, mining and whatnot. Actually, right now, playing that 5-5 was kind of a downside for us because he actually managed to kill off his 8-5 idiot into it, whereas into a 4-1 he would not have had the second batch of damage. But as long as he doesn't have like a red blood... There you fucking go. Yeah, Leroy's GG. But uh, this was a little bit risky because if he topped like the red blood plague, uh, he would have healed back. Okay, all around a wow. decent first game. Okay. About the warrior matchup, uh, one thing I've noticed that works really well against them is filling up the board and saddling up. Uh, so uh, against those matchups you try to keep the tempo going, but you don't really overextend until you go to the turn where we can actually saddle up. So that would be around turn 5, turn 6, something along those lines. Uh, yeah, but, I, uh, didn't, I even, didn't top deck saddle up, so... Yeah, even but he that's... Was even that's not a uh, guarantee to win against Warriors because they have so much efficient removals, as you said, like, uh, especially the one damage three times. That's uh, quite easy yeah, to clear got... even a saddle up board like that. I, st I started slow with, you know, maybe maybe three tokens or, mm. or four, at the, four at the most, and he cleared it three times. Yeah. And well, uh, what, basically, what... basically I, was, I was starting to run out of resources. Yeah, it'd be like that, it'd be like that, but uh, yeah, yeah it, it's a 50-50 matchup, it's basically does he have all his removal, because a lot of the times you do have a lot of tokens, if you, man if you manage to refill three times and he still clears you, it's probably not your game indeed, but uh, yeah, that's what you try to do, you try not to overextend too much, so that you can actually keep on refilling while he keeps on removing, and uh, at some point he needs to stop removing, because unless he doesn't, you're out. By the way, I wanted to jump in, you know, if there's anything I can do to support you, to help your channel, you know, feel free to to ask because I really appreciate the work you do and uh, it's yeah, kind of cool lot, to man. be uh, trying to uh, help the community, you know, teach people how to play better and stuff. Yeah, thank you very much, man. I really appreciate you. Alrighty, let's, uh, let's jump into the next game then. That's actually the only counter to Pally right now. But you gotta play it well. Okay, against the warrior. What are you thinking here? Okay, so this is one where we don't go wide and we try to. Uh... Yeah, help help me out with the warrior matchup. What am I? What are what are we trying to achieve against control? You want to keep the the tempo going without overextending too much. Uh, saddle up can definitely help if you manage to uh, time it right. But yeah, with this hand, vicious leader spear is the only thing worth holding on to. It's not your best card by any means, but it's still a nice way to open up things. So I hold on to the vicious. It is something he is going to want to kill one way or another, so it could bait out some decent removal out of him. Okay, that ain't that hot right now, but let's see. Not an amazing top deck either. I think for now the Musician is fine. We don't know if we're going to get a way to finale at any time soon afterwards, and it's not like we have fuel for the Slitter Spear anyway, so might as well just do this for now. So, do we open it and then go face? Hmm. 
I think we can, sure. It's not definitely not optimal for us to be doing this this turn, but uh, we don't have a great play anyway. Like, hero power and hero is way too slow. That's about it. Okay. Hmm. You can top deck the Vicious Slitter Spear and uh, put down Misha on the far left. Misha. There you go. And just slap face. Honestly, if he still doesn't acknowledge this board till next turn, we might go with just one more uh, Vicious into a uh, saddle up. We'll see what we top deck. Snakes would be optimal. If he does clear something here, we'd probably wait a little. Counterspell is a bitch, so we'd wow. rather not play into that. Let's try with Observer of Myths here. Two mana Observer of Myths. If it turns out to be explosive room, so be it. No what is this positioning? Huh. Okay. Fuck. But yeah, play Liak on the far right this time. You want to be keeping your taunt isolated after all. And go face with everything. Or actually, wait, 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 wait. Let's, uh... Let's trade the 2-2. Two -two. Trade the 2-2. Two -two. I don't want this uh, Misha to die to 4 damage, 4 mana, 3 damage AoE. That's all. Could coin out Brawl here. Can coin out the 3 damage again. Doesn't have it. What does he have? Okay, doesn't get card draw at least. Sure. Courtesy of us. Hmm. Right now, Copper Saddle Up sounds like a decent thing to be doing, huh? The alternative would be with a hero power, but against a class that can literally gain so much armor. It's really not gonna get us uh, the results we're striving for, so let's huff our saddle up here, yeah. Would have been a lot better if we actually traded the, the quill board last turn instead of the instead of the Naga, but we were too far gone into the play. Just go face with all three. This still gives us lethal out with Leroy. Should be good enough. Like, surely something is gonna stick here. Is he coining the six man idiots? He is! Come on, surely something sticks. That sticks. Perfect, GG. Got him. Exactly. Well, actually, it's one extra lethal. Yeah, Leroy GG, turn 6, Warrior. Not so hard, is it? Neat. Okay, already Diamond 2. Let's keep at it. He got saddled, boys. He got saddled. Okay. Guess another dick, haven't lost him just yet. Okay, we're going first this time, so Mantle Shaper is naturally not gonna be a keep for us. Neither of these are. We can toss them all. Naturally. <laughs> I like how the little keyboard at the bottom of the Hearthstone board kinda interacts with my camera border and whatnot. Wow, what the fuck is this hand even? Well, that's a pass. It could work out, but it does involve a lot of wishful thinking. Let's see. Gross indeed. That's not a bad top deck. Is it a good top deck? I mean, it's better than just crapping the patchwork pals, I feel. So yeah, get the remote control and slap mouth. Okay. Hmm. 
That's not so hot. Hmm. Ooh. We should hold on to that, should we? I mean, we could play it out right now. It's messy. It's real messy. Hmm. Weapon to face snakes. Crack open the patchwork pals, play the snakes, and uh, your face attacks into a silver hand recruit. Mm, what are we doing with the 1-1? One, one? I mean, best you can do is... You want to crack the other one? I think you kill the the ghoul, kill the fail the frail ghoul. This way we deny him potential card draw. The citadel stands strong. Okay. That's perfect. He doesn't have a great target for that. Let's see if we can top deck anything amazing. Okay, right now. If we go face and then go RC Rampage, that gives you a uh, free free freeze. And the turn after we can do the saddle up action. This guy does not have AoE. He hasn't shuffled plagues. I don't think he's even plague. I think he's rainbow. So honestly, he should not have a way to really do anything here. So uh, go face with the weapon. Played a four-man RC Rampage, and we are not attacking with the snakes. We want them hidden so we can actually get an extra uh, saddle up targets later. So just pass, and that's all. Shit. But still, we're going to be left with a good amount of idiots. Okay, good enough, good enough. Let's see the top deck now. Could coin out to kill the 1-1. One, one. Doesn't. Okay, that's fine. Bananas of all people. Okay, let's think about this for a second. It would actually be better for you to drop one Vicious Slitter Spear and one Banana onto a 1-1. One, one. one Banana onto a 1-1. One, one. Play Saddle up. And that also allows you to drop a zero mana mantle shaper, and you can go face with everything. Far left would probably be best, yeah. And face everything. Next turn, he could be coining out a hollow hound. That's gonna heal him for a lot, but it's also gonna give us a bunch of uh, random beasts. He just buffed, so he does have access to five damage cleave. Would be a damn shame, but the way we positioned. Keep note, guys. Keep note. Right now, he has to make a decision which part of the board he wants to be trading. And uh, the way we isolated the 5-5 five, five definitely helped us preserve a lot of extra health. A lot of extra damage here. Okay. Let's trade off the Viper into the 5-3. He's already full health, so doesn't matter. We want to get that room on the board so we can fit in Leoc. You can put down Leoc on the far right again. Who do we want to make big here? Maybe the snake. Middle dog. I'm down with the snake. Give it to the snake and hero power. Boys? Yeah, twice in hero power, face everything. Next turn we have Huffer and a bunch of random idiots on the board. If he has another Hallow Hound, he is gonna refresh for one more time, but that's about it. Okay, 
it's actually not that shit of a list, guys. It's actually still above 60% win rate. Okay, he does have the second batch. Hmm. But the way we positioned again denies him a lot of the damage he could have had. Problem is, this shit's still alive. The other problem is we don't have lethal right now. You have uh, 18 damage, so it's free off. So uh, let's put... He has 7 mana extra, and that's not so bad. Let's put Misha on the board, put her on the far... Right. Don't want her next to the 5-5, five, five, you know. Play the free mana saddle up first. And now, once the 1-1 one, one trades, that's gonna give you a couple of idiots out of it. So the 1-1 one, one trades into the 5-1. And you can hero power face everything. Again, there was no reason for us to be dropping our cover this turn, because if you're not having lethal, might as well hold on to that cover so you can actually uh, get a vessel for potential bananas, potential Liak, that kind of jam. GG, yeah. Okay, you need room. Uh, the free 2 Gatling Snake can kill itself into the 4-8 first, so we can see uh, where the damage lands. Okay, the 1-2 and the free 2 kill off the Divine Shield, and you have li literally lethal on the board. No huffer needed. Cool. Okay, given the fact how bad our starting hand was, uh, we still managed to get a clean win out of this one. All around good stuff. At it. Okay. Okay, again we have the saddle up potential here. I kind of like most of this. This jungle gym is going to help us poke out some of them divine shields, but I'm not sure we actually hold on to it. We would rather get even wider board instead of the jungle gym, don't we? Yeah, let's just remove the jungle gym here. Feels like it's gonna work out. Turn one musician, turn two barrel, turn three double barrel, turn four saddle up potentially with another one drop. If we top deck one, this Ziliax could be a down to one by then. Yeah, musician for now. I love a little fiddle. Do we have an Observer of Myths? It's kind of the same thing. I'm asking, I'm asking. Probably gonna be more important than that. No worth risking it. Let's just uh, put down Barrel of Monkeys. I would still trade this 1 1 off. Against Pally chipping away one damage here and there is not gonna be the way uh, we win, that's for sure. That's all for now. One more coat of paint. That does not include gold ranks, uh, Gerd. Trust me, I know where to look for stats. Okay, I mean, this coin RC Rampage is just huge, isn't it? Let's do that then. Coin the Rampage. And next turn, these doggos are gonna be insane. Wait a moment. Do we even want to be including this Zilly? We're, we're locked. We are, but we do have access to make a trade, but it's oh, really not cool. worth it, is it? I think you just go face for now. Next turn we can fill in. Okay. Acceptable, mm, have a nice my, day. My favorite uh, objective spell. Mm. 
Okay. Where's my location? <laughs> I mean, we're definitely not playing location. He is definitely going to be the saddle up, but uh, should we Zilly first? Doesn't help too much on this particular board. You want a monkey? Um, no, no, you gotta. It's, it is going to be a saddle up. The question is, how are we going to make the saddle up feel nice? Oh, I almost did it again. Please it's don't. two mana monkey. My bad. It is. Um, one, two attacks into the four one. Play the one mana snakes. Play the saddle up. Trade both the minions. Make sure to start with the middle, guys. That's not middle. The other middle. That's not middle. Go face. Go fast with both of them. When I say middle, it means middle of the attacking minions for the Dire Wolf Alpha potential. Right now, you could have gotten uh, two extra damage out of nowhere. So when I say middle, it means from the middle attacking minions, meaning the number two, three, and four positions, like where the cow is and the other two minions, in order to squeeze a little bit extra damage. You remember the Dire Wolf Alpha, right? We actually got it in one of those games. Give absent minions uh, plus one attack beast to two wolf. Sorry, I'm just not following. I thought I attacked with the middle. You middle kinda did, minions. but you have to attack with the middle attacking minions. We had five attacking minions, and you attack with the far right uh two attacking minions, you know? Okay. You can you can literally see who attacked the ones that are no longer RC hounds and the snakes around the right, which were not uh, able to attack. So the optimal play would have been if uh, the second, third, or fourth RC Hound attacked first. And again, the second or third RC Hound to attack second. And that way you could could have gotten a random uh, plus two damage from a Hound. All right. Okay. Uh, this man still has the aura alive. So if we want to be uh, getting rid of all of these idiots, we got to start with the middle and the right side first and then kill off the keychain. Um, let's attack the free free into his two free. Actually, is this even smart? We kind of want to drop something on the board here. Okay, the one one snake attacks into the one one. Not. That's not the one. So one, sorry. Though. Now you're getting extra healing for him. The two one groovy cat can kill off the four one. <laughs> Put down Zilliax. Hero power, go face with everything quickly. Just do it. Hero power, face with everything, and uh, play patchwork pals. Patchwork pals. There we go. So yeah, I was trying to emphasize how important it is, the order in which you trade, because right yeah. now you gave him two extra healing because you gave him uh, the lifesteal twice instead of only a single time. Okay, sadly a lot of these idiots are dying here. And he's healing back to full again. For all the people in the chat uh, making fun of trading, this is why you trade, because they always get uh, lifesteal back to full anyway, so might as well give, the give yourself a good position on the board. But what do we know? Okay... Right now we can have a good amount of damage with Observer of Myths and whatnot. This guy is not... Uh, he does not run the mining package, so he doesn't have uh, Finley to transform our board. Uh, what is the biggest amount of damage we can have right now? Myths into Leoc into Huffer would be... Plus three damage. Plus 12, 20. It's not enough. Let's put down Observer of Myths on the right side. No one's going to believe this. Leoc on the right side. 
the other right, but whatever. Um, gotcha. Put down Misha and go face with everything. Misha, yeah, the taunt. Far left. Face everything. Wait, what happened there? The Observer of Myths did not trigger from Liak? That's so silly. Liak gives the plus one before Myths considers it a minion. That's kind of counterintuitive, isn't it? Uh, it is weird, but it makes some sense, I guess, if you think about it. Hmm. Should be killing Observer of Myths, honestly. He's not that smart, though. Okay, we could actually kill him here because of that stupid misplay. Uh, we should actually be killing him here. Uh, put down... Huffer? I'm not sure it's enough, though. It is enough. Crack open Awaken Tremors and play one Tremor. And... We don't even need the hero power there. Yeah, face everything. Exactly lethal. Cool. QL. So yeah, definitely against the Pallies, uh, the saddle up is the way to go. Because they don't have a great way to deal with it in the early turns. Whereas they do have great way to deal with tons of damage in the early turns. Because they basically kill back the full so easily. Is a force to be reckoned with. I will fight with honor. Just a musician, right? Is Zilly actually ever a consideration? When you're going second, it actually kind of is. It's kind of weird. Definitely would have uh, been great in this hand, though, so whatever. Okay, mantle away. Hey, there's that Zilly we were talking about. No, Dragon Priest is actually playable, Gurge, but yeah, not, not the Priest you were talking about, is it? That's all. Okay, he's playing the variant I was playing. Sadly, we don't have a way to kill this time anytime soon, huh? <clears throat> Thank you, Crack Open, the Patchwork Pals here, so we can actually coin out a couple idiots next turn. We also have the Mantle Shaper, so that's gonna help. You can, uh... You can just go phase this turn next turn. We could use Liak. Shit, dude. Okay. Mm. Might want to be careful with subs like that, DJ. You should know better than that, bruh. This is Twitch we're talking about. We could coin out Liak and Huffer here, deny him all of that card draw, but definitely think we ought to do that. Yeah, let's coin out Liak and Huffer here. Liak. That is not Liak, bro! For the love of God. <laughs> okay, Did we really am trade I these? Trading to deny him draw? God damn, feels wrong. One and one. Tread them both, fuck it. He can heal back so easily, it doesn't even matter. Like, if we're not trading him, we shouldn't have played him in the first place, the Huffer at least.
Okay. Stays the full health, so it doesn't matter. Okay. I just thought double location. Could definitely be a good amount of damage later, but right now it ain't doing jack shit for us. Um, I think the RC Rampage right now makes a good amount of sense for us. Yeah, play the four mana Rampage and double trade the Taunty Boy. That's about it. Okay. Like, playing locations without actually using him on the same turn feels very slow tempo, we're not into that business. Yeah, this guy's playing the Mining Variant. At least he doesn't have his weapon already, that helps a lot. Okay, surely he's gonna be killing Leok here. Alrighty. Okay, what do you think we do here? Uh, location, see what we get. What is this, see what you get, you're trying, you're saying, you're talking about? There's nothing random about the location. Uh, I mean, the damage, obviously, but uh, I think we can uh, go observer of myths. Put down Zilliax. Far right, far left. Far right. The Quillbor kills off the Lifesteal Idiot. The free 2 Quillbor. And you can put down a location now and use it. Put it, uh, yeah, it's fine, I guess. Use it and go fast with everything. Okay, pretty good amount of stats right about now. We managed to double buff this board. We only have four beasts on it, but still pretty decent. The desert sun strengthens my rays. Okay, that's a bummer, but <laughs> we will recover. Somewhat, definitely quite the big bummer there. Crack the shield. Yeah, one of them attacks into the divine shield for sure. But uh, what what the hell are we doing with the rest of them? Hmm. Attack two more into the shield. Play a couple of barrel of monkeys. You can put down the zero mana mantle shaper on the far left. Should we just hero power and call it a day? Yeah, let's just hero power and pass. No reason to attack with the rest of them. Mage is not great right now, Ruby. Mage is not all that it's cracked up to be. It it was actually top top tier on the first day of the expansion, but after that it fell hard. It's like bottom tier two at best right now. So uh, yeah, you might want to play something other than Mage right about now. Shit, dude. I'm pretty sure it's gonna attack in the order in which these guys were on the board, so the Murlocs are gonna kill themselves first. 5-5 five is gonna attack last. Okay. 
Wait, what? Oh, he did in the finale. It's cool. Oh. Okay. Uh, we want to make room for more beasts on this board, so uh, attack the two one ones into the four free. Your five five can kill out the two five efficiently. Put down another location from your hands. Crack the Jurmonger. One mana awaken Tremors, I mean. It has Jurmongers in it. Play a couple of the Jurmongers. And uh, how should we be efficient here? Play one more Barrel of Monkey and click the locations, both of them. Hmm. That was crappy. Would be a damn shame if this guy... He does have his Tiger Plushie in hand. He hasn't buffed it or anything, but it is there for a little bit of healing for him. Problem is, we're probably not killing this man next turn. The turn after, with double locations lined up, we might be. Might be in a pickle. Okay. Surely he had a way to play around here. I don't know what happened there, but at this point, I don't even care. Face is the place this time for real. Feels like you're overvaluing a uh, face, uh, Gurge. Like, seriously, how are we not gonna be killing his card draw, man? Like, imagine giving Pally tons of card draw. They're obviously gonna be able to heal back the full. Yeah, 6 damage was a little bit too much there to, uh, to sink into a 1-2, but card draw is definitely something you should be overvaluing for the Pallys there. He still played the plushie, but he was already uh, full health, so he did not need to get the lifesteal out of it, but he was gonna get healed back to full, but we did deny him the card draw there. So, uh, you probably still win, you just give the Pally more chances, you know, that's what I'm trying to say, dude. The deck is obviously cracked, it's not rocket science, but what I'm trying to do here is actually, uh, uh, give the, the science behind actually making a winning play in certain situations, not just win as hard as you can, as fast as you can with the broken deck right now. Okay, what are you thinking against this DK now? Maybe a full keep, we could do worse. Patchwork Pals... I'm not sure about keeping Patchwork Pals, man. Going first, especially. Patchwork Pals is... It's actually high up there. A lot of people actually hold I mean, on to it. If you toss him, you want to toss him? Let's toss the Patchwork Pals, yeah. The guy literally had enough mana there, man. Like, literally. You literally saw the man do exactly what I was saying. We're playing around and he did it. And we denied him the card draw and he was still gonna be full health. Despite what we do. Yeah, Vicious Litter Spear away. That's about it. This could be a good saddle up on turn 3-4. We'll see. Next turn weapon is probably happening. Okay, that's not great for us, but it is what it is. Top deck the weapon, and uh... Yeah, top deck the weapon, and you can actually go face into the 3-2. The one three can go face though. He can make that, uh, he can make that trade himself if he wants to. 
Yeah, go face, 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 face. I, dude, you know Sorry. what face is, right? If I heard I'm you say, say trade. I did not I, say trade. I, I heard you talk face. about. I talk. I heard you talk about his trade next turn, and yeah, uh, he's gonna make that, the trade. That was That's that. what I said. He was gonna about make that. that trade. That's fine, I guess. But we helped him. I a helped little. him. Uh, let's put down the location here. Your face kills the one one go face with the one one. Location should have been on the right side here. That way, the new minion you summon is gonna uh, sandwich the location, but it's whatever. Your face attacks the bro. Sorry, you know I'm what we're trying to do, right? You know, we're yeah, trying to build a, a big bit board of... against this guy. Uh, to be honest, I'm feeling a little bit of fatigue, so do I take the trade? Mm, not anymore. Just go face. You were trying to protect your minions here, and that's why we have a weapon. Like, imagine going face when there's a 1-1 one -one on the board with your weapon. All right, like, let me I'm take a few sure deep breaths you... and recompose myself. I'm pretty, pretty sure you would have uh, made that trade on your own. Like, you would never make that play on your own. Uh, fuck. Go face with your face, equip another weapon, hero pattern, go face. Hero pair, yeah. But yeah, if we managed to stick a little bit more minions on the board, this would have been a saddle up turn for us, probably. Three minions, decently enough. Hopefully we top deck some, some more bodies on the board because now we're severely lacking rc rampage would be an amazing top deck with this location active and whatnot year of the papegasus indeed i mean if we don't get anything great next turn barracode obane is gonna give us Decent amount of card draw. Hopefully you don't top deck saddle up because that would be the worst right now because that's one of the idiots you could summon for, uh, with Barrack. Okay. Yeah, this is really not a great uh, board to be thinking about saddling up, so might as well play Barrack on the left side. Five mana barrack on the left side. And your face can kill off the 2 1 here. And this way, the minion is gonna summon on the right side. And we're gonna have the location sandwiched between him so he cannot cleave anything, even if he could. And he can't. Okay, good amount of card draw. We're still severely lacking for a, a decent saddle up, but next turn, barrel a monkey plus weapon swing and one saddle up might be a thing. Okay, has a zero mana two drop there. Let's see what that do. It don't do shit. Cool. The fuck? He's hard running frequency oscillator? The hell? <coughs> okay, this is a turn where we're gonna go uh, saddling up. So you can go face with the weapon. You can play one Barrel of Monkeys. You can put down the Torn Mantle Musician on the far left without the finale, obviously. It's a lot more valuable to get an extra free drop, potentially. And play the top deck, the right side, love, because he knows we drew that from the uh, Kodo Bane. You can go face with everything else. This location is really not worth clicking here. You literally just have three idiots on the board. So yeah, let's just go face with them. <clears throat> That's about it. Right now he does have access to a potential uh, Hound. The way we positioned, we are playing around into the best of our capabilities. Okay, that's somewhat of a bummer, but we're still seemingly fine here. The hell? This thing comes back as a free mana? Jesus, dude. What the hell is this guy doing, man? Some kind of aggro decay? Jesus, dude, stop it. Ooh, 
Playing a little game of chicken, I see. A little game of chicken. Okay, I think it would be a good idea to, to make a few trades here. Let's uh, trade the one free and the two one ones into his four free. What have we here? Ooh, that's a nice one. But yeah, keep at it. The one one kills it. Uh, moment. Put down a two mana barrel of monkey. One more time. Use the free mana saddle up. The two free snake which rush kills the 4-4. Four four. Uh, free 5 code obey and attacks the free free. Click the location and, and uh, that's all. Save the weapon swing, just click the location. That's all, cool. Okay. We should be pretty safe here. We should be pretty safe here with a couple of taunty boys like that. Like, this guy is going very, very hard to the face area. I'm assuming maybe there's a Leroy in there that's getting buffed right now. But, uh, yeah, right now we have this man's cover. GG. That on board. Cool. Alrighty, man. Well, all around for three hours. Uh, we did start off a little bit rough. Like, I was taking <laughs> a little bit too long with the discussion part. And we did botch quite a few plays there. But we still managed to cover quite a lot of ground. And you still manage cool. to see a lot of different lines. You should be thinking a lot of different uh, layers of the game you probably were ignoring all this time. Like uh, figuring out your entire play, sequencing your play correctly. And also thinking about what the opponent might have against you. Uh, so you can actually uh, uh, play a little bit differently so you deny him his good outs. Uh, I'm happy that we at least saw the Warrior matchup so you can see it's not actually that bad. Like it's actually pretty easy as long as you don't overextend super uh, a lot and as long as they don't get all of their removal in their first uh, 10 cards uh, so yeah all around we uh, did quite well okay thank you very much thank you as well man have a good rest of your day and uh, talk to you soon